What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 130 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Yesterday I talked to you about a Spider-Man miniseries and today I want to talk to you about another Spider-Man miniseries. This is Spider-Man by Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli. This is a five issue miniseries that has Peter Parker of our reality, uh, the main Marvel 616 reality, going to the Ultimate Universe where he gets to meet characters like Miles Morales who is the new Spider-Man of the Ultimate Universe and ultimate versions of Aunt May. Gwen Stacy, Nick Fury, and Iron Man. And uh, this story is not exactly what I expected. What I expected to happen here is that Peter Parker accidentally goes to the Ultimate Universe and then he has to team up with Miles Morales to defeat this really awesome, powerful villain who is going to destroy both worlds. And then it's really epic and awesome. And that's not at all what we get here. Uh, Mysterio from our universe, he accidentally teleports our Spider-Man to the Ultimate Universe. And then it's basically five issues of Peter Parker going around the Ultimate Universe being surprised that he's in an Ultimate universe. That's basically the plot of this story. Uh, there's not much more to it than that. I would have liked it more if it had been Peter and Miles have to team up to defeat some villain that neither one of them could defeat by themselves, and then Miles gets to be mentored by this older, more experienced uh, Peter Parker, and then Peter Parker gets to see, hey, this is some of the stuff that happened in the Ultimate Universe. Maybe I need to keep that in mind when I go back to my world, uh, make sure those things don't happen to me on my world. Something like that, where both of them learn a lesson, and I don't really feel like that's what we get here. And I shouldn't have expected something really awesome from this book, uh, because it is by Brian Michael Bendis, and that sounds mean. That's because it is a little bit mean. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, he likes to decompress any story idea that he has. Uh, he likes to try and stretch it out and make it last a lot longer than it really should. Uh, this material that we have in this five-issue miniseries, this really should have taken up about one or two issues in a longer storyline. We don't really actually have a storyline in this five-issue miniseries. We have what would have taken one or two issues in a larger story where Peter and Miles have to team up to defeat some bad guy. And they do technically team up to defeat Mysterio, but Mysterio is played as a joke in this book. He's not a competent villain at all. He accidentally teleports Spider-Man to the Ultimate Universe, and then he accidentally walks into a trap whenever he goes to the Ultimate Universe to make sure that everything's okay and that everything's going the way that he wants it to go. Uh, I don't really think that Mysterio was the right villain to use for this big crossover that many people were waiting 10 years to see. Uh, not necessarily 10 years to see Peter Parker team up with Miles Morales, but 10 years to see the Ultimate Universe crossover with the 616 Universe. Uh, and it is a little funny. Uh, this is a little sidetrack, but uh, Joe Quesada, who was once the editor-in-chief of the Marvel Universe, uh, of the Marvel Comics uh, company, uh, he once said, if the Marvel Universe and Ultimate Universe ever crossed over, that that would mean that they had completely run out of ideas. Well, Joe, I'm very curious what you think about this and what you think about everything that Marvel has been doing since this came out, because this came out about uh, five years ago. Uh, I'm very curious what Joe Quesada thinks about what uh, has been going on at Marvel now. Uh, no pun intended, Marvel now. A anyway, uh, but that's something that Joe Quesada said, and then, of course, this crossover happened, and I don't think that it's the huge, epic crossover that a lot of people like me would have wanted to have seen a little bit earlier in the life of the Ultimate Universe. I know when I first started reading comics, the Ultimate Universe was fairly new and fairly young, and that was mainly my game way into Marvel Comics, and I really was interested in seeing a crossover between the main Marvel Universe and Ultimate Universe when I was younger, and then by the time this came out, uh, I wasn't reading Ultimate Comics as much anymore, uh, but overall, I don't think that this is a bad story. Uh, we get some really good moments from some of the characters here. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is a story. This is Peter Parker walking around the Ultimate Universe for five issues, and he gets to react to seeing a younger Gwen Stacy who's still alive, and he gets to react to seeing a black Nick Fury, or a younger Spider-Man who's not Peter Parker, and getting to see that Peter Parker died in the Ultimate Universe. We get to see stuff like that, but there's not really an actual story here, and that's really disappointing to me, because I was really expecting this to be something really awesome and cool, and it ended up just being Peter Parker walking around for five issues and reacting to everything. Uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of other people really like this story. Uh, I don't, because I don't really consider it to be much of a story. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to pay any money for it. This came from my library. Uh, I don't pay money for buying Michael Bendis comics anymore. I'm boycotting anything that he does unless I can read it at the library for free. Uh, but uh, one other thing that I thought was weird about this that I don't think we're ever going to see followed up on, at the very end of this, uh, Peter Parker is back in his home reality, and then he Googles Miles Morales, and then he reacts to whatever he's Googling. He's like, oh wow, this is huge, and we don't get to see what he's Googling. So presumably there is a 616 version of Miles Morales, but 
I don't think we're ever going to get a follow-up on that. Uh, now, in Fear Itself, I think it was the Fear Itself miniseries, we see uh, Spider-Man saving a little kid who has uh, Morales on the back of his shirt. And presumably, that is the 616 version of Miles Morales. But since Peter is Googling Miles Morales here, and he seems to recognize who or what Miles Morales is in the 616 universe, I'm assuming that it's not that little kid. Uh, my theory has always been that the kid that he saved from Fear Itself is actually Miles Morales' son, and that Miles Morales is actually older in the 616 universe than he is in the Ultimate Universe. But, like I said, I don't think we're ever going to get a follow-up to that because now Miles Morales of the Ultimate Universe is living in the 616 universe after the events of Secret Wars. So, I don't think we're ever going to get to see the 616 version of Miles Morales. I think that's something that Bendis was teasing and then he never intended to follow up on that or maybe he did intend to do it and then he just never got around to it. I don't know. It seems like uh, after Spider-Verse, anyway, that would have been a really good opportunity to have Miles Morales meet the 616 version of him himself, or at the very least, do a big story that's kind of sort of a sequel to this, where Miles uh, goes to the 616 universe, or maybe Peter Parker meets the 616 version of Miles Morales. It wouldn't even have to be a universe-crossing story. Uh, but that's about all that I have to say about Spider-Man. I thought it was okay, uh, but not really a story, uh, so I don't think that it really needed to happen. Uh, those are my thoughts on this book. I hope that you guys liked this video, and if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest today. Catch you later.